we first want to start off with is some of the thoughts that you're thinking. Because it's the thoughts that you're thinking that's got you a little disconnected from your emotions. Understand so far? Yes. So it's not actually a time to fix the emotions first. It's kind of time to become aware of the thoughts, change some of the thoughts so that you're tuned into who you are, so that then the emotions will be authentic. Understand? Mm -hmm. Because what happens when you have an incident that happens, either an incident, whether it's a big one or a small one, if you get a little off kilter, a little off rocker a little off your path kind of like when you're hiking on a maintained trail path but you just take one little step over you could still walk but it's not as smooth and harmonious and maintained yes yes so what happens though when you get a little bit like one one foot on the path one foot off the path if you ask yourself how you feel then no matter what, you are going to feel unsteady, unsure, in an emotional term, deviating a little bit from our analogy, confused. So ask yourself how you feel in that standpoint and trying to build, get positive from there is kind of new and quite frankly pointless. We want to spend a little time with you here on this one. If you're on a path. Can you, can you see us? Yes. If you're on a path and you're walking, you're going to feel stir, sure, you're going to feel steady, consistent, you know where you're going, you can see where you're going. If this foot gets off and you're walking like this with a limp, of course you're a little unsteady. Yes. We just want this to sink in. Of course you feel unsteady right now. You, well, one you on your own were a powerful being and you worked with us you got tuned in tapped in turned on to who you really were when you feel that high flying disc as esther translates it it is so often for people to want to go hang out with family kelly did it and she's a, she's well you're pretty good at it too LaShawn. so kelly did it and she got off kilter when she first came back from going home for an extended period of time. She gained weight. She started thinking negative thoughts about herself. She just kind of came home, took an inventory, if you will, and went, whoa, you remember this from the course. Take a step back, third person, observe it. That way you're not caught up in the emotions. So this is what it feels like to feel out of sorts to feel off kilter, to feel unsteady, to feel unsure of myself. Because all that happened for you was there's a little bit when you got around other people's energies, everyone does this, so it's normal. You picked up some of it. Some of their energy, sometimes when you get around people, like motivational speakers of sorts, mm -hmm. you want to take on some of their energy so that you get that inspiration, that motivation, you take that action. That's why sometimes people like working out with a personal trainer versus on their own. Kelly noticed, we had her go to a dance class. Kelly surprised herself and went, did I do burpees and this and that? The equivalent, it was a dance class. So when she came home and did her HIIT workouts, normally she was stepping them and she went, all right, well, I clearly can do it. She was gentle on herself being aware that she didn't have the energy of the teacher. But she also kind of went, all right, Kelly, you can clearly do it though. Do you see that? Yes. Okay. So that's kind of simple. Now let's get to a little bit more complex. When you get around someone and their energy is a desire, a, a need of theirs to get met, and you pick up on that, it's natural to assume it came from you. It can be, it can be very easy to confuse that with inspired action from your inner being. Okay. So just a sigh of relief. Allowing yourself to be okay because that's normal. That's natural. Kelly does that. Kelly. Kelly was contemplating, huh, oh, maybe I need a coach. I don't know. Maybe I do. I haven't had one for like a while. I don't know. Well, universe, if I were to get one, can you kind of show me who it might be right now? And 
there was a little misunderstanding between the two when they got on a phone call. Kelly didn't sign up to work with her. Kelly was under the assumption that, wow, is this lady really giving away a session for free? You get on the phone call, she qualifies you to make sure you're a good candidate for her program, and then she'll give you a session to get money, to get more money in your bank. I've never met a coach who does this. This sounds awesome. Yeah, I kind of got, you know, before you buy a car, you get a test drive it, right? And this lady doesn't quite do lives the way I do. That's why Kelly fashions her lives the way she does. They're like, no, I want people to get a taste of who I am. So I want to make instructional videos. I'll make tarot videos. But I can do that high vibe Monday where people can ask me questions and see how I'd coach them. Make sense? Yes. This lady doesn't have that see how I coach you live. So Kelly went, oh, well, look at this. The way she wrote this sales page, that kind of solves that. I can get on a phone call with her. If she thinks I, I qualify for it, I get a taste. And she's over here promising that she could double more triple revenue. Like, all right, let's, let's see what magic this girl has. Okay, so you got that, right? Mm -hmm. The lady didn't pay full attention to her sales copy, to keep that part of it short. She had a lot of energy of, nope, when people get on the phone with me, it's simply to, it's a simply logistical process. Here's the program, here's the credit. So what ended up happening, this lady booked a 15 minute call with her. Kelly went on there with the, all right, I guess she's gonna ask me questions about like my business, see where I'm at, see what I know, see what I don't know, see if you can help me, if you give me the free session. If the free sessions have been a lot of value for me, of course I'd sign up to work with her for a little bit. She had the, no, were credit cards. So what ended up happening was a mash of their two energies because they both were able to, they're both in touch with their energy enough. Some people, if they're not in touch with their own energy and how they feel, they kind of just, whoop, the other person's energy takes over. They got a mash. So this lady had her first hour and a half, well, hour and like 15 minute sales call. She was like, I never get on the phone this long. What's going wrong? She wasn't aware that she picked up some of Kelly's energy. Mm. Because I want to see value from you. I want to see what coaching from you is like. At the very end, the, the lady went, okay, hold on. We need to get going. It's this much, 10,000, da, 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 da. went, oh, wait, I thought I heard on your thing that you were 20,000 one-on-one. Your group program was 7,000. Kelly did come prepared to sign up for a $7,000 program. She decided to change her rates and change her program. Kelly got on a sales call. She figured if I stay in my energy so much, it won't matter. What ended up happening? Well, are you ready to pay? And Kelly just went, and her mind went, wait a second. Uh, for a dramatic word, betrayal. Mm. For a less dramatic word, Kelly just went, oh, this is weird. I thought it was supposed to be, she was confused. She was, I thought this was supposed to be a 15 minute phone call. And then I'd get an hour of value. Okay, I guess she's letting it mash into one. And at the end of it, she was kind of like, you know, I actually really like this lady. And I think there, here's a couple things I know I'll learn from her. I know I'll learn them on my own, but maybe I'll learn them quicker with her. Um, but I guess I thought I was supposed to get that one value call. Mm. So at the very end, Kelly just went, well, to be honest, and this is where Kelly mashed into her energy and picked some of her energy on. I went, yeah, I have money. I can sign up. I could pay. And she went, well, hold on. I was prepared for a $7,000 program and like a $500 deposit today and $500 monthly payments, not a thousand down a thousand. So this is a little bit double. And Kelly was feeling a little like, what the heck? If you were, if you're going to raise your rates on me, you kind of see what was going on. Yes. Mm -hmm. But both of these women who are very powerfully in tune with their energy, this one felt some of Kelly's standing off sales call an hour and 15 minutes instead of her usual 15. Kelly agreed to, yeah, yeah, I've got money. I'll sign up. Yes, the, but, you know, you're, you want more money than what I was prepared to spend today. So give me until this date. Kelly, in hindsight, was, I feel confused. I feel bamboozled. I feel, do you see how because her, okay, so now, whew, starting over with our hands. You know the vibration list, 1 through 22? Mm -hmm. Kelly went in there with, positive expectation, pretty high up on the list. She went in there with curiosity, eager anticipation. She kind of dipped a bit into a little bit of frustration, a little bit of irritation. When you, so right there, Kelly, well, she has us, and you're now going to learn this skill. Kelly went to, oh, wait, hold on. I'm feeling confused. I feel like the moon card right now. It's a lot of swords. 
I know I would like to work with her. So I feel a yes, but it's not a hundred percent yes. And I don't take action unless it's a hundred percent inspired right now. What's going on? She's like, Oh, I went in with this expectation. That expectation was broken. I see what, where she was coming from. Hmm. Is this someone I'm going to work with? Yes or no. Her sales copy was a little misleading. Do you see how Kelly took that time to evaluate the new offer as presented? Yes. <sighs> and then Kelly tended to those emotions of confusion. Of course I feel confused. I went in expecting this and I wasn't, I, I wasn't dumb. I wasn't misled. There was nothing wrong with me to think that that's what her sales copy said. Kelly also right there. This is one thing that you did. Yeah, you kind of immediately dipped into the rest of something wrong with me. Kelly could have dipped into that very easily in this case scenario. Well, I'm a coach. I don't do free coaching. Why, why would I think that she would do that? She had that thought for like a split second and went, no, she clearly doesn't know all her sales copy she has out there. Because the lady's in a creating sales funnel spree. So Kelly went, no, she clearly does not recognize what was on her sales call because Kelly typed it to her like the, Oh, I thought it was supposed to be a 45 minute like coaching call. I'm not just giving away a coaching call for free. So the red, the not red flag, the miscommunication was there from the beginning. Makes sense. Yes. But they both just went for it anyway with the, with their separate expectations. Okay. You're hearing all that. Kelly tended to the, you know, okay, that's why I feel confused by these expectations. It kind of became clear that she had these expectations. Okay, and then she went straight into, and you know this from the course you took with us, she thought everything nice and kind about herself, gave herself, you know what, Kelly, I'm really proud of yourself. You didn't just fork over $10,000 to someone. You didn't just sign up because, like, your people-pleasing is clearly... This is a huge sign that that's out the door. Do you see that compliment she gave herself? Yes. My people pleasing is clearly out the door. Clearly. Okay, but I see how I, at the very end, fell into her energy a little bit more and, and went to, because how they ended the phone call was the other coach went, re, Kelly went, okay, give me until December 16th. Maybe I'll make some more sales or Kelly was just buying time essentially. Cause she's like, hi, I want to work with her. I'm not quite liking the programs. I'm not quite liking this little bit of confusion I have. We'll touch back December 16th. And the other lady gave a, a excuse me, you want another phone call with me? Energy, not words. And Kelly just said, I'm very well aware that the next phone call we get on, it's to process payment. The lady's just, she was in free land for so long. So she's very sensitive to that topic. Okay. The lady then at the very end of the phone call went, okay, great. I'll send you the invoice on the 15th. And then on the 16th, we'll do enrollment. We'll get you signed up. I'll get you in all the groups and all of that. And then we'll do this. And Kelly just went, okay, that sounds great. She caved to the other girl's energy. Make sense? Yes. And that's okay. And that's okay. Kelly meditates far more, far more often than most people. Kelly has us. She's asked us, should I work with this lady? We tell her, yeah, she'll be a good support for you. The price point's about right. She knows enough about this and enough about that. If, you just, if you're just looking for support and a little bit of acceleration in these areas of growth, she'd be a good person for you. So Kelly went, okay. And she came, she came, Esther. Oh, beautiful Abraham, Esther Hicks, right? She's a powerhouse. Uh -huh. Kelly was just listening to one. Oh, there you go. Mm. Kelly was listening to one of her recordings where Esther was talking about, guys, you are always influenced. This is not word for word how Esther translated it. This is Kelly's translation of it mixed in with the lesson for you. Guys, you are always influenced by the people you're around your utmost responsibility, if you want to call it that, is to tend to your happiness. Because if Kelly had not been tending to her overall happiness, she would have immediately caved and just forked over the money to the lady on the phone call. 